Okay, and we're live. What's up, Stu? Hey, how you doing, man? Stu Stone Hello. here from Jack of All Trades. We are doing 1987 Donruss for four sponsors. Good old Danny, Danny, who is that, Danny? Danny R again? Danny R is starting us off. Um, Danny R. Jeremy T is in the upper right, Eric J lower right, Dan S lower left. And speaking of Danny R, um, he did tell me to pull the Tim Salmon card for Foul Ball Paul. So we have that yeah. in the stew That's box. Cool. Um, Are you going to cut the Seiko off the bottom too for Foul Ball Paul? Or? <laughs> right? Uh, and, and all kidding aside, you know, these are hard to get high grades in. There's really low pops of these. If you get, like, if you have, like, a professional paper cutter or something, um, uh, you may want to get into that. I've got a bunch of boxes um, with cards on them. I've been uh, fighting on Twitter all day with uh, Houston Astros uh, sympathizers. <laughs> yeah, that is, um, uh, that is so gnarly. Um, that story is awesome. Uh, I mean, Cody Ballinger just blew it wide yeah. open. Um, oh, there'll be a Netflix documentary on it. I wish I was doing it, but I'm sure someone else is. Look at this. Opening up this box, we must say that 1987, for the record, is probably all around one of the best years for baseball cards if you were in that era of all time. 87 top set, we already have discussed at length. This Don Ross set is just as iconic to 1987. And the 87 Fleeter set was also, like, these are three loaded sets and everybody was collecting. And by, after Conseco in 86, 87, people were buying these by the millions. And nothing hotter than 87 cars and, and 87 Don Ross. Holy, holy, holy moly, man. Loaded with stars. I can't wait to see this. From a sealed case, we're ripping in. First pack for Danny R. And yeah, a couple people left comments and corrected me on a couple guys I left out. There's, it's really a loaded rookie class. Um, uh, I left out Barry Larkin. Um, over, oh, these are sharp too. Steve Sachs. So, um, what's the lotto? The lotto is um, actually, you know what? I uh, the lotto is uh, the Bash Brothers lotto. So I forgot I was gonna. Um, make it a little easier for everyone so in honor of our future um uh intro that we're going to have um a little teaser to it so i made it a bash brothers lotto so mcguire and conseco there's two conseco cards the diamond kings and the standard uh the mcguire card can be tough to pull okay i i kind of capsule summarized a couple breaks online you're lucky to hit one mcguire per box so it's a tough lotto so what i'm going to do is make steve trout <laughs> a wild card so you, ha you still have, have to pair card? what's that is Steve Trout even in the league in the 87 still there is an 87 Donruss unless I'm mistaken um, if I'm mistaken then there's no wild card but I think uh, I think there is I think Maybe he's a white Sox? is he on the White Sox or something I thought it was still the Cubs but um We'll find out. Uh, but anyway, Steve Trout is a wild card, so he can replace either Maguire, Conseco, or both, I guess, if you pull double Steve Trout. Um, so so that's the lotto, and the lotto is a pack of hopefully, 2018 update. Hopefully Steve is uh, wearing uh, his signature glasses uh, in whatever card this is. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, – Stu saw a little sneak peek. We're going to have an a intro coming up um, for the channel. Um, it's going to be fun. Um, Ozzy Guillen, that's a second year. Ozzy yeah. Guillen. Who should be managing again. I don't understand why the guy wins the World Series and no one hires him. And Ken Dixon on the back. So, yeah, these um, uh, these are the uh, the lotto. And, by the way, I mentioned that I found these for, for $358 uh, at um, Walmart's. And in case anyone doesn't follow the market on those, those are going for like 15 to 18 bucks a piece right now. Um the 2018 update series because of the Acuna and the Otani short prints. Um, so, uh, so that's a nice, it's a nice lot of it. We'll, we'll rip those on the channel. I'd like to have everyone do it so we can, there's a joiner rookie. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you didn't have an 86 Don Ross? Did he have an 86 Don Ross? I don't, th I think he had a uh, rookies. Um, yeah. 
And I think we had a Tops update, um, but I think 87 Tops and Don Rascar's first. Uh, yeah, and the, the centering's just a little off. You see the baseballs have to be split right down the middle, so we have an instant tell. Man, the corners are really nice, and the edges are really nice so far on these. Tim Burke. Gantner. Royster. Honeycutt. And Jody Davis. All right, third pack for Danny R. But, yeah, just to put the Astros stuff to bed... <laughs> when the reigning MVP just just gives great copy and just walks all over your apology and just calls you out, um, you have some more explaining to do. Um, Mookie looking hey, somber for a change. Yeah, that's looks like Dodger Stadium. Mookie's sad when he was playing in Dodger Stadium, I guess. <laughs> a rare uh, sad moment, Orozco. The uh, when they were taking. These photographs, I mean, uh, the Mets were the reigning World Series champs at this point, right? That's right. These photographs would have been from their, like, championship season. Yeah, that's right. Maybe. Chris Brown, uh, not the singer. <laughs> right. Chris Brown, Diamond Kings. I forgot he got a Diamond King. And then a Randy Myers rated rookie. A little bit of a miswrap on this one. Did he really deserve a Diamond King? He must have led his team in something. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Todd Worrell, um, way off cut. You see the full baseball on the left. These are when you get really off cut. Um, and no no baseball on the right. Um, Bruce Hurst, almost the 86 World Series MVP. If, that, if uh, Buckner fields that ball, then Hurst is probably the World Series MVP. Um, Ted Power. Black Bell. George Bell, who was the MVP in 1987. That's right. Um, Nolan Ryan, just a little off cut, but I'll definitely sleeve that. Ah, uh, look. Ready McGriff. That's nice. McGriff's second year card. Yeah, a little yeah. top ding. Just a little off cut. Chris James, rated rookie. Bob Boone. These are awesome, man. This is just really, really fantastic. These are so sharp, too. These... I just I haven't opened eighty seven donors in a long time. It's, you forget like uh, you understand why there's low pops of pop, of a uh, you know um, PSA ten. Not only do those uh, the instant tell has to be you know the baseball has to be perfectly centered, but the complete black borders. Um, uh, so. Um, All right, Rasmussen, Ted Simmons, Donnie Hill, Mike Schmidt, Hall of Famer, a little yeah. off cut, Dave Henderson, Morgan Horton, Balboni, bye bye, Greenwell. That was a hot card back then. Remember this card? He was on, he was on the cover of Beckett uh, 30 years ago this month. Um, yeah, that was a um, that was a super hot card. And he got really hot in like eighty eight, eighty nine. Ellis Burks and Mike Greenwell, uh, they were two star players from Boston that got a lot of love by the by collectors. He, um, I think he didn't he lead the league in RBIs. Um, yeah, him and him and Ellis Burks were tearing up the league. Yeah, I mean, um, he was gnarly for a while. Um, all right, so halfway through. Um, Four packs to go, Danny R. So far, no Bash Brothers siding or Steve Trout. There's a nice Curry Puckett Diamond King. Yeah. Some of the Diamond King paintings are better than others. That's pretty good. I like that one. We know that uh, Vernon Wells' father was the painter who did the Upper Deck uh, uh, checklist pictures. But I don't know who was the artist for these Diamond Kings. Hmm. Um, originally, it's some... Uh, uh, I forget. Um, Jenkins, maybe? Um, no, Perez Steele. Um, so That's Perez, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. one of them is the artist, and the other owns the gallery. I forget which is which. Oh, lotto hit. Quisenberry, 
with that sidearm delivery. Yeah, that's well captured. Home run back. And Dave Kingman, this has got to be his final card. Um, Dave Kingman doesn't get enough love. Uh, um, this guy, um, I mean, look at these numbers in the, in the the through the 80s. Um, 37. Not, not much of a batting average. No, low average, high strikeout. But um, uh, look at the production in RBIs and home runs. Uh, even up to 86, you know, Canseco didn't lead the team. It was Kingman with 35 home runs. Which was yeah. like third in the league. I mean, you know, it was, you were a stud if you had thirty-five home runs back back then. And then that was it. This was his last year. He went. I mean, how many guys hit thirty-five home runs in the last year and just say it's been real? That's uh, that's really crazy. I I, uh, I didn't know that. I wonder why he decided to to take off into the sunset. I don't know. There's a story there, maybe. Um, Something like, like Barry Sanders, Sanders type shit. shit. Yeah, and uh, of course, I think I, I mentioned it in another break, but there's a there's a great clip of Tommy Lasorda just losing his mind when a reporter right. asks him about a Dave Kingman right. uh, performance. Right. Um, uh, Howard Stern used to use it as his bumper, um, uh, bleeped out when he was uh, on K-Rock. But it's a great clip. Tabby. Gary Gaetti. So Gary Gaetti played in the World Series in 1987. And won the World Series. Yeah, definitely. Um, Lloyd Mosesby. Bobby Bonilla. Hey, that's a rookie. Is it? I knew it was going to yeah. be close. It is, actually. Still getting paid. Still getting paid. That's right. Danny R's probably... Danny R's a Met fan, so he's probably not too excited about the the Bonilla hit. But, um, but yeah, that was a hot card back then. The Killer Bees, Barry Bonds and Bobby Bonilla. Andy Ben's like two packs left. Danny R, try to get the lotto going, get one of our big rookies. Definitely do. Frank White, really nice guy. Frank White used to sign for everybody at Boardwalk and Baseball. Really nice guy. Wait, can you go back uh, a couple to the who came after Frank White? Kurt Still. Why does it look like? Why does it look like there's no logo on his jersey? Yeah, uh, it looks like it's on his um, his left. It's it, this must be like a spring training jersey or something. Um, it's the right. you, you can see a little bit of the C, but it's just outlined. It's white. Um, it is a little bit of a different jersey for sure. Hmm. Squaw, Candyman, Alvin Davis, solid player. Oh, Fraser, rookie. Double-rated rookies, but not the ones we're looking for. Sometimes they got it wrong, the rated rookies, as evident by those last two. Willie Hernandez, who changed his name to Guillermo Hernandez. Guillermo Hernandez. Bob Horner. Bob, look at Bob Horner. He's got to be 100 years old already at that point. And this is, I think this is right when he went to Japan. Um, uh, he, the Braves, uh, let, or, you know, I don't know, he, he decided to leave, and the uh, there was a Japanese. He was one of the first players to do it. I think this was the year, actually. I don't think he actually played in 87. I think 87 is when he went to Japan and hit, like, 50 home runs in, like, 30, wow. ga 30 games or something ridiculous like that. Um, he just went nuts over there. He was, like, a, an absolute, like, um, national hero over there. Um, I remember there was an article in Sports Illustrated. Like, he went from, like, you know, kind of on his way out in the majors and then just took over Japan. Um, and then some other guys, you know, I think he probably paved the way for, like, Cecil Fielder and some of those guys. Um, oh, William, I was there. Right, yes. Um, Alfred uh, Griffin, really nice guy. Rob, Harvey Brooks. Rob Ducey was there. Wait, there's a guy now that was that just did that. Eric Ta Eric Thames from Milwaukee. He was he went to Japan and he tore the tore the league up, and now he's back in the majors. It's probably final pack, Danny R. Let's see if we can double down on your Bash Brothers or give you something nice here. Um, I think it's a little more competitive over there um, now. I think back then they had just, like, someone like, you know, like Bob Horner could go over there and just unload. Mash. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bob Welch, Rudy Law, Mr. October, a little off cut. I'll sleeve that. It's a Hall of Famer. Keith Hernandez. I'll sleeve that for Danny R. That's really sharp. Just a little off cut. A little more baseball on the right. Fred Lynn, way off cut. 
All the baseballs on the left, none on the right. Woodard, Marty Barrett. Marty. Clements. Yeomans. Joel Davis. Krakow. Grubb. Young and Bannister. Grubb, Scrubs. We got a little of everything, but... Uh, we didn't do it. We didn't hit the lotto for, for Danny R. Um, hey, def definitely worth the price of admission. He's got his Bobby Bonilla. He's got uh, some nice uh, storytelling from us and some anecdotes. You know, that was worth, that was worth it. Look at those black edges. Th these cards are super sharp. I mean, there's there's nothing, you know, there's nothing like these just packed fresh gonna, black board uh, cards. Are you going to set them in the puzzle pieces? Yeah, absolutely. I piled these up. Um, we could probably... Um, Try to build the puzzle. Yeah, I know. Like <laughs> if they give me permission in one break, we'll do that. We'll, we'll we'll actually build the puzzle. No, there should be a lotto for all parties involved, myself included. That if you are able to put together the full puzzle, we all win something. Yeah, you probably can with a box. Um, I bought a box of eighty-eight Donruss back in the day, and I remember I w it seems like I was like one or two pieces off. Um, uh, so Jeremy T is up. I'm not sure if Jeremy's bought in before. Name doesn't sound familiar. You might have before, but welcome to the Jeremy. channel, Jeremy T. If you haven't, first pack. Good luck. Absolutely. All right. There's a Ryan Sandberg. That's nice. He's always got those eyes that you point out. Yeah. Just like he's just getting ready to snap, maybe. Gary Ward. He's a very intense guy. Rick Dempsey. Excellent player, Rick Dempsey. It's Allison. Hackman. Mr. Hackman. Laying down the button. Playing the game the right way, Rob Wilfong. He's yeah, he's kinda almost looks like a pitcher up there. Like we like he's kinda yeah. <laughs> he's laying down the button like a pitcher. He looks like he's about to get his fingers broken by like a baseball. Yeah, it's <laughs> he's way up. I mean uh, for a and second baseman. That's like how not to lay down a bunch. <laughs> he doesn't lay down too many bunch, you can tell. That's no Wally Backman right there. Like the no, player. no. What the hell? There's a frame of spiders. The drones. One oh, yeah. just like was running away from a spider and like fell through a coffee table or something like that. <laughs> Did Google that? That's a real story. <laughs> oh, look who we got on the back. That's a good omen. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my guy. Zay Gonzalez. Peter Bryan, super happy. Robin Yao. All the favor. Lynn Dykstra. Uh, that's, that's a, a much, much better looking butt. Much better. A little little more action. A little more... He is Don Ross rookie. Um, it is, actually. I think you're right. It's it's not Danny R. stack, but um, absolutely. There's what the puzzle looks like all put together. Lazio, Ruben Sierra. Uh, that's a rookie. Remember, that was a hot card back then. Yeah, for sure. That Dale Murphy actually looks pretty pretty good. It might be just... Uh, the baseballs are good. You're right. It's just a little high, but um, I'll still sleeve that because I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer at some point. Mr. Harold Being Baines. And barely any baseballs on the right, so he's a little off-cut. Tom Brookins. Um, do you want to see if Mike Heath is on the back? Yeah. <laughs> Luis Aquino, and there's your guy, Corey Snyder. We'll sleep him for good karma. Um, Snyder in 1987, what, that was his best year of his career. I think he had 33 home runs, and that was a big year for him. I mean, this whole, this rookie class, um, you know, the this whole, you know, Canseco, Joyner, Bo Jackson, Corey Snyder, Danny Tartable, they all kind of overlap, but they're pretty much within a year of each other. And, um, Two. Greg Maddox, yeah, um, Bob uh, Barry Bonds, but um, Corey Snyder, if you remember, was the highest rated of all of those guys in the sporting news. He got like an A, A or an A minus. I can't remember because um, I, I remember he, he tore it up in the Olympics. Um, the Olympics, and um, he was considered just a better all around player. He had a big arm. Um, I, I remember because uh, a friend of mine named Lance was. Uh, we all kind of picked a rookie. Um, one of my friends named Kevin liked uh, Wally Joyner. I liked Canseco. 
and he just ribbed me nonstop with that Sporting News article about, you know, um, Corey Snyder's got an A, and, you know, Canseco strikes out too much and doesn't have as big an arm, so that's why he's a B. Um, I'd like to get that issue and read it again, actually, um, all these years later. I remember he used to carry it around in his, like, Trapper Keeper and harass me so, with it. John Moses, we needed him for the, uh, for, instead of Lloyd Mos Moses B, we could have John Moses. Alan Trammell, a little off cut, but um, sleeve that. He's a Hall of Famer. And Tolleson, Sambito. John Franco. That's an early John Franco for sure. Danny Jackson. Jim Clancy. Darwin. Steinbeck. Rated uh, 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 pr Prior to him adding like that addition on his helmet, Steinbeck. And we, um, oh yeah, that's right, um, to protect his jaw and everything. Um, uh, another Murph, which I think is actually just a little bit better um, than his first one. I'll see both of those. That Murph looks like nine. It's really nice. I mean, these these black border cards. I mean, there is there's no room. There's no room for a problem here. Um, that's a nice card. And Alan Trammell. And so far, our lotto has been a little, a little quiet. Um, <laughs> we've only hit the Jose. Even with my addition, I knew it was going to be tough when I, I scanned through a couple boxes, box openings online, and uh, you're lucky to hit one McGuire per box, uh, and that's lucky. Are you Lansford? Shoe. Tom Seaver, Hall of Famer, and um, wow, nice centering with the baseballs. That's close. Rich Bordy, Sid Bream, went to the Braves, Cowley, Bergman, and Aquino. So we're kind of, you know, kind of shuffling along. We're getting like a Hall of Famer per pack, and but we're not hitting like, I mean, we've got a bunch of cards we want to hit. Um, Got a Hall of Famer on the back. Hey, that might be a 10. Look at those baseballs. That's no joke. Those things are perfect. Wow, I'm going to yeah. see that. Jeremy might be a Corey Snyder fan too. Yeah, I saw Foul Ball Paul and was like telling you that you're not the biggest Corey Snyder fan actually. Um, <laughs> you can't win with Foul Ball Paul. You know, He'll just... There's you know, a, he knows, like, there's a player, he's, he, he's a bigger fan of no matter what player, you know? <laughs> right, is that his thing? That's funny. Well, he just I, knows I thought Conceito was his guy. Like, like, he knows, like, Corey Snyder's home address. I don't. So, you know what I mean? It's like, Paul knows everything about every player. He can tell you what Danny Darwin ate for lunch yesterday. Uh, you know, Paul is a, uh, a baseball genius. That's a very nice... Uh, Corey Snyder for any Snyder super fans out there. That Snyder is, I mean, if Jeremy is a Snyder fan, that is a gradable one. Um, it's either a 9 or a 10. I mean, those baseballs are perfect. I don't see any dings. I I don't examine the backs, but I you know, I think the fronts are always what's more important. Gary Pettis. Gary Pettis. Tom Chiraldi. McLemore. Mitch Williams. It's got to be well, an early Mitch Williams. That's his rookie. It's got to be. Wild thing. Yeah. We'll see that. Joe Carter likes him. You know, Joe Carter didn't need a bang on a trash can to, to uh, walk off uh, the most feared reliever of the season, like Altuve may have. Um, yeah. Uh, another Dave Kingman. Speaking yeah, of which, um, Joe Carter, I mean, does he not deserve some Hall of Fame consideration? I mean... I'm and he doesn't get it. I mean, he was a 100 RBI guy and an average guy and a home run guy and a good leader and a good community guy and had the biggest hit you could possibly have as a baseball player. Is is uh, clutch hits, but I mean, you're not kidding about those RBIs. I mean, he had like, is it is like... Is Mazeroski in the Hall of Fame? I think so. Well, that's a guy whose career was defined from hitting a World Series winning home run, the only other guy who did it. So... You know, maybe one day Carter will get put back into a conversation about something. I don't know. 
I glanced at his stats the other day, um, and I mean the RBIs are just ridiculous. I think he had like like a like a decade of 100 RBIs. I mean, and for teams in the first half of that decade, he was doing it on teams that like lost 100 games a year. So that's not easy. No, heck of a player. He he really should get some consideration. Um, I agree. I mean, maybe he's not a Hall of Famer, but he should at least be in the. There should be like yearly tweets like. Joe Carter was good, like the way people do it for Jack Morris and Burt Blylevin or Don Mattingly. Although, obviously, Mattingly is a, is a better player than Joe Carter overall body of work, I would imagine. But Carter, he, uh, he's I, special. I, yeah. He, thanks. Mattingly's one of those guys that, you know, was just, he sh, you know, his light shines so bright, but it wasn't for that long. Like, Joe Carter probably has much better career numbers than, than Mattingly, but... um. If you look at those like five seasons in the mid eight, mid to late eighties, uh, Mattingly's numbers were just absolutely ridiculous. Julio Frank. I think from Kansas City, Joe Carter. If I'm not mistaken. So if you ever go to Astro or uh, Royals games, sometimes you'll see Joe Carter. Willie McGee. All right. Well, I don't know if we're a Dave Kingman fans. So we've got three Dave Kingmans, but um, <laughs> last pack, Jeremy T. See what we can hit for you here in your send off pack. Clutterbuck? Eric Davis? Nice Eric Davis, just a little off cut. Saberhagen? These were two really hot cards at the time. Goose Gossage. Ron Kittle. Always the uh, on the top of the cold list on Beckett, Ron Kittle. Yeah, he, somehow he was always going down, but at some point he must have gone up to, to go down. Um, there's a really nice bunt picture by Brett Butler showing you how to do it. Ron Kittle was a rookie. He won Rookie of the Year at one point, didn't he? Um, it seems like it. He had he had some type of accolade. I mean, he had a, he had a couple of really solid um, uh, home run years. Um, yeah, thirty five and a hundred yeah. RBIs, thirty two and seventy four. Um, Solid slugger. Al Newman. Rafael Pomero. Nice. Actually, that's really nice condition. Just leave that. All right, well, a couple of nice uh, gradable cards um, by guys who are not Hall of Famers, but... Uh... He was the 1983 AL Rookie of the Year. Yeah. So that when was baseball that... cards got hot in 84, 85, 86... Kill probably like tapered off from his monster rookie campaign, and that's what landed him on the coldest. Right. Case closed. <laughs> that's it. That's how it happened. All right, Jeremy T. Not a bad stack, but um, uh, even with my um, lotto enhancement, it was not. We got um, a Pompero and you got some Dave Kingmans. You got some. I mean, several really nice gradable cards and a couple of um. Uh, Kingman. Kingmans and Snyder's and. Uh, oh yeah. Dale, two Dale, Dale Murphys that were both Dale, Dale Mahorchik, you got in there somewhere. <laughs> Luis Aguayos. All right, Dan S. Let's see if we can do some Bash Brothers. Hit some bow. Yeah, like, I'd like to see a Maguire with a bow. The bow is really nice. I remember he's like running from the outfield or something. Um, I, is, is he or is he throwing? I can't remember. Um, Eric Davis. Oh, I mean. No nonsense, Eric Davis. Yes. Gary Carter, nice one. I love Gary Carter, who passed away uh, in 2012 on this day. Uh, Tony Fernandez passed away today as well. Both of them were the same age. That's just a weird coincidence, but really, yeah, uh, I saw I saw that. Um, uh, rest in peace, uh, Tony Fernandez, Lee Smith, and Sherald. Is, is Gary Pettis getting sassy? He seems to always be. Doing something in baseball cards. You see that Gary Pettis card? He's like making like a kind of a base. Next time we get Gary Pettis, take a look at him. Yeah, I'll glance at it. It's right here. Is he being sassy? <laughs> Where was he at? I forgot. The last pack uh, just opened had Gary Pettis. Oh, was he the last card? Yeah. There he is. Is he making like a. Remember he like. He, 
I don't know. There's something about him. <laughs> he is kind of like, have you taken the picture yet? How much longer, dude? Um, <laughs> it's got a little vibe like that for sure. All right, we got a uh, Bly Levin on the back. That's a Hall of Famer. Bob Walk. More Shirley. Sweet Music Viola. This was a good year for him. Tony Gwynn. Nice. Another hey. Dave Kingman. <laughs> of all the A's, uh, Jerry Brown. Glenn Bragg's rookie card. Remember Glenn Braggs? He was kind of something for a second. Yeah, he was one of those guys. Uh, O.B. McDowell that was uh, kind of a hot prospect and solid player for a few couple years, and yeah, and that was it. Glenn Braggs. Wally Hamilton. R.J. Reynolds. Newman Checklist. Definitely gotten that before. Terry Kennedy. Oh, hey. Tony Fernandez. We'll definitely sleeve that for uh, good karma. Phil Necro. Look at the grip. Yeah. Nice. Also, 100 years old in that picture. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's had a little pro problem. Uh, yeah. No matter how good of a uh, uh, camera Phil you Phil Necro's in the Hall of Famer, no. What's that? Phil Necro's in the Hall of Fame, right? I think so. Um, I should look that up. But no matter, no matter how good a camera you get, it's not as good as the iPhone. Um, I had to switch um, with the OBS to... Um, yeah, Phil Necro's in the Hall of Fame. Next time you better put some respect on his name. All right. Call of best. Phil Necro. Carl Best, look at that guy, fresh face. There he is, that's good. Will right. Clark, that's good, that's a rookie. Absolutely. Some new cards. Some fresh look collation here, Hal McRae. Hal McRae looks like he is sauced in that picture. <laughs> yeah. As you know, like what, uh, you know, he had a history of, of, of dabbling. Gubaza? Gooden? There you go. Definitely a hot card back then. Nice seeing some different cards. Ozzy Virgil and Mariano Duncan. That's that's how you lay down a bunt right there. He popped it up a little though. It looks like he looks like he got under it. So he didn't really it's great a bunt king. Sleeveys. These are nice. Um, that's Still nice trying card. to hit the uh, Big Mac. Lay of fish, small fries. Big Mac, Bo, and Barry. We want to hit all three of those guys. Um, but we got Will. Um, this was one of the guys like Barry Larkin that I kind of I didn't mention in the intro. Um, oh, yeah. Will Clark is, is the man. All right, Dan S. Pack number five. Jesse Barfield. Speaking of about cannons, yeah, a cannon. I feel like he was MVP maybe um, one of these years right through here. I can't remember. He had some uh, insane yeah, numbers, though. He, 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 in 86, he had a monster year. Yeah, look at that. 40 home runs and 100. I think he, he, he absolutely, he led the league. Um, I think he led both leagues in 86 um, with 40. Yeah, he was, he was really good. He ended up on the Yankees. I think he may have even won a World Series with them. I should look that up. Jesse Barfield, World Series. Oh. What'd you hit? Oh, there he is. No glasses. Compact lenses. But he's, look how hard he's squinting. He needs his glasses. That's not squinting. He's sauced, man. That's our point. <laughs> he, had a, he had a couple brewskis in the dugout. All right, so we got a wild card. So Dan S. can hit either Canseco or McGuire, and he's good to go. Dan S. hasn't been following the channel. He's going to be like, why did you sleeve this Steve Trout? <laughs> Alan Davis on the back. I'm going to be looking up Jesse Barfield for you. Just waiting for the page to load. Lloyd Mosesby. 
Yeah, see if he won. I thought I thought he may have won MVP one year, but he might not have. I think he just had a monster year. No, he finished second in the MVP voting results in '86. To Clemens, right? Because Clemens had that stupid year. Was, uh, from the Silver Slugger, '86 was his was a monster year for him. Candyman and Alvin Davis. Did you ever play in a World Series? Um, he left before they. You said he went to the Yankees, right? We're in '92. Oh yeah, yeah. He was. He never. He never played in the World Series. This guy. Oh, that's too bad. So he missed out on Toronto, and then he was there too early for the Yankees run. Missed out on the Yankees. Yeah, he was right there in the middle. Well, you know, the Kansas City Royals broke uh, Jesse Barfield's heart in uh, 1985, Game Seven. Of the ALCS, Rudy Law played in that game. Reggie Jackson, we are getting close, dangerously close to another Dave Kamen. <laughs> All right, we'll see this Reggie, and yeah, the Royals were the that was the team of the year. Although um, that uh, there was a missed call that was very pivotal for the the Cardinals. Um, that missed call at first base that they kept replaying back then. That was right when I start started like paying attention to baseball. Believe it or not. Um, Same. Same. Marty Barrett, Clements. We've seen some of these guys: Krukow, Grub, right, Sandberg. I see that Sandberg. That was nice. Dempsey, Allison, Jeff Leonard. All right, last pack. Let's see if we can hit. A trout would do it because then you'd have two wilds. Uh, Kenseiko <laughs> or McGuire, either one, Dan S. Good luck. And there's Boddicker. Traver. Fitzgerald. It's Law. Hill. Rupert Jones. Felder. We saw some of those guys, but some of them we haven't. Robin Yao we've seen. And there's the Lynn Dykstra and Chris Bazio. <laughs> all right, so it looks like it's all up to Eric J. It's a nice stack, DNS, but um, yeah, we're still looking for we're still looking for some guys. Um, there was a really nice Dwight Gooden in there. I think that was my card I like the best. I missed the uh, call on that. I didn't realize that was lower left. I'm going to call the second pack from the bottom lower right. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll highlight. Um, we'll pick out a hot pack. All it's right, Eric J. All right, Eric J., it's up to you. Eric J. has been in breaks before, for sure. Um, uh, it seems like he hit something. Uh, we, we had an 85 tops break, and we hit McGuire. It might have been Eric J. Um, I, have a feeling, I remember that. One break I did with you, we hit a we hit a walk off on like the last pack. We hit the Griffey or something. Yes. Oh my gosh, that was the. Walk, maybe this guy'll get a walk off. That was um uh. That was the last pack in the second box. Yeah. That's called a walk off. Look, this is a great pack. It is. We've had some of these guys before, but um, really nice. Look at all these guys. Rick Roden, Forty, Bream, Brown. We want to shake it up a little bit, but um, off to an auspicious start here. This is a if this is a sign of things to come, he's going to be taking home the jackpot. Yeah, that one. Um, wow, look at the baseballs left to right. It's just a little low. Um, that'd be a PSA so ten. Corey Snyder gets, gets sleeved in these breaks. I hope that you are sleeving Corey Snyder cars. Even when I'm not here, like behind my back, you should still be sleeping Corey's tighter cards. Okay, you, you need to watch um, one of our first breaks. We did 85 tops, and um, I went off about we hit the Corey Snyder, and it even had a printing flaw, and I still sleeved and top loaded it. And I was like, you know, this was the hottest card in the USA set when it was out before Maguire. No one yeah. heard of Maguire back then. It was Corey Snyder. And um, there was one other guy. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, 
that and those were the hottest cards. Um, so yeah, I, I sleeved in top loader. I even made a joke like, whoever gets this is probably going to be like, am I missing something here? You know who should have uh, had an eighty-five tops Olympic card is Will Clark because he was a big star. There you go, he hit it, and it's nice, and it's real nice. The baseballs are beauty. That might be a ten. This that is might be a ten. Super nice condition. You better put that in a one touch. Should I? Should I put it in a one touch? I might. Oh. I'm gonna put it in one touch. You know what? Just for good karma's sake, you're right. We haven't we haven't had a big card yet, and um. That looks like a gradable Mark McGuire. It is. Oh man, the the baseballs are absolutely perfect. Everything about it looks perfect. The corners are perfect. Um, are really close. It is just a little. Just a little top to bottom, I think, but um, really nice. That's awesome. Look how close. Oh, the baseballs are so perfect. I can remember that being in the that card being like a twenty-five, thirty-dollar card all day. Such a hot card back in the day. I actually went to. Um, uh, McGuire, you, well, you know, we, we talk about PEDs and stuff sometimes, and it's and it's really, t you know, it's really kind of sad with McGuire because you remember that season. Yeah. And that was, even according to Jose, McGuire was clean. Um, no. For, for 87. No, even according to Jose, that he was absolutely yeah. clean for 87. Um, and, you know, and this is from the guy that ratted him out. So, um, uh, but 33 home runs at the break. I mean, the dude was just on fire, and he did look different. I mean, he was a skinnier guy. He was a huge guy, but, I mean, he wasn't, like, all jacked like he was before. He had, like, 49 home runs or something, or 47 home runs? Yeah, he, he, 49, and um, uh, remember, no one had hit 50 in forever um, until Fielder right. came along a couple of years. So Dawson and McGuire were both at 49 that year, but um, at 33 at the break, he was just the hottest thing going, and I think he got – Orange Bell had 47? The ball must have been juiced that year. Everybody had 30 home runs that year. 87 was a big jump. It absolutely was a big jump. Um, Literally, like everybody and their cousin had 30 home runs. I remember a season a few years later where everyone had 50 home runs. Like Greg Vaughn even was hitting 50 home runs. Like Brady Anderson. Uh, there was all these crazy dudes hitting 50 home runs all of a sudden. Luis Gonzalez. Like 50 became commonplace. Oh, my God. Oh, he got two McGuire's. This guy, this guy effing walked it off. Eric J is just twisting the knife on everybody. And heck of this, we've seen this guy before. We didn't see him in the okay. McGuire pack. Wow. That's a nice Will Clark, too. The centering on the baseballs. This guy, you said it's hard to pull a McGuire. He's pulled two in back-to-back -back packs. If, if we had opened this pack back in 87, we'd be turning cartwheels. Uh, oh, God, are you kidding me? Will Clark and Mark McGuire rookie in the same pack in '87. You'd like run the schoolyard. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at it. Here it is behind Dickie Thon and Dave Rigetti. And it's a little more top to bottom than the other one, so I'll definitely sleeve and top load this for you real quick. But um, that's not a one touch. It's not a one touch. See. It's definitely just a little off, but it is. Um, uh, Still sharp. I mean, That's awesome. It just makes you happy to look at that card. So he needs either a trout, technically. I mean, he needs a trout or a Canseco, and that's all he needs. Um, either one of those guys. He's doubling up on the. Um, oh, yeah. Will Clark. Nice, Will Clark. All right, Eric J. Eric J is off to a hot start. Yeah, that was just three packs? Come on. We're going to hit them all on this uh, stack, maybe. It's another rated rookie. Lindemann. Chris Brown. Kali Arulo. Doyle Alexander. Haas. Gagne. Dalton, Dutch. Dwight Evans, McLemore, there's the Mitch Williams, a little off cut, but that's a rookie, so I'll definitely sleeve that, and there's a Steve Garvey, 
Um, Steve Garvey, I'll sleep that because that looks pretty darn good. Is Steve Garvey a Hall of Famer? I Hall of like, Very Gooder. If he's not, he's... He's not in the Hall of Fame. He's, not, he's in the Hall of Fame of like having more kids than Evander Holyfield. Oh, is he like a Philip Rivers type guy? I think he has like 20 kids or something. <laughs> really? That many? <laughs> I don't know. I should look it up. I may as well. All right, four packs to go. Eric J. Does Eve Garvey have an interesting Google search? He has six <laughs> kids, which was a lot back then. Sammy Stewart. Von Hayes. Forgot he had a Diamond King. Vince Coleman. A little off cut. Mr. 100 stolen bases. Morris. Bob Stanley, Soto, Guerra, and Farr. All right. Come on, Jose. Jose's got to be in here. There's Stu. Mike Socha. Billy Hatcher. Tettleton, Necro, Raleigh. That's not, that, that's not a Tettleton rookie. Is it? I don't know. No. no. Yeah, no, it's third, like a... No. He didn't, he's been around. Yeah, he'd been around. Not He didn't get a lot of action until the year before, though. Um, but, uh, he did. He good. Well, uh, he went to the Tigers. Lamar Hoyt, very good for a couple years, remember? You're the one that pointed out that he was a Cy Young. Cy Younger. I totally forgot that, but... Yeah, he was a Cy Young in the early 80s. All right, Still two packs. Here's the hot pack right here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot to earmark it. This is a Stu Stone hot pack. This is going to be a pack that's going to have perhaps a Dave Kingman. Definitely a Neil Franco. <laughs> Neil <Dave> Eaton. <laughs> Dan Ernie Macho Camacho. Camacho. Needin' Fuhr. Needin' Fuhr. Lily McGee, solid guy, solid guy. So far, this pack is garbage. Rick Leach, who we have faked a kidnapping we discussed before. Rick Roden. Rick Roden. No back. The old, the old and that Andres Gararaga, not rookie card, and poorly cut. Yeah, off cut, second year card. And this hot pack is going to be quite cold. I apologize. Eric Davis, though, that's nice. Back then, that would have been hot. That was like a buck and a half back then, um, that Eric Davis, for sure. Can't win them all, guys. You can't win them all. And Goose Not Gossage. Not a bottom left type of guy. So this was kind of forcing it anyway. I'll take the Eric Davis. That's a victory. Yeah, he was he was so close to um, to forty forty. Um, it would have been. I think it was actually this year, eighty seven. Um, he had like eighty stolen bases, and like thirty. Seven thirty-eight home runs or something. I'd actually like to look that. Uh, um, see how close he was. He was like he was really close to it because everyone okay. I, we all talked about it, and then of course Canseco came along and did it the following year. There's Mr. Kittle. Uh, wow, Eric Davis in '87 batted two ninety-three with thirty-seven home runs, fifty steals. Yeah, uh, see how he, three away. He, he became the first player in history to hit 30 home runs and steal 50 bases in a season, despite only playing in 129 games. Oh, my gosh. That was 40-40 no. all day if he got a full season. Oh. So, you, are you uh, – what, what did I miss? Greg Maddox, oh, final packs. Dude, this guy walked it off. Walked it off. Nice. Oh, back to back. Look at that. And a Palmero. Too sleepable. If he gets a Jose in this, it's really sick. Are you kidding me? You got Palmero and Maddox back to back. That is a crazy pull. Mike Davis, not the A you want. Not the Diamond King you want. Greg Walker. Greg Morrison. Walker. Or Trout would do it. Trout or Jose. Either one. Uh, Landro. We saw the back card, so this is it. Last one. It is not. It is Charlie Lebron and Brian Down. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. I just would ask the lawyer for, uh, who is this? Who's, who square is this? Um, is, uh, Eric J. Eric J. For Eric J. I would, I would imply as his, as his represent, 
as his representative, can you please look at the bottom of the Donruss box and see what player is in the lower right panel? Uh, that is a good good eye, Stu. And uh, it is. I just want to know if that's what what player. I'm I'm just curious. I know. I know. Panel. I know what you're up to. I actually brought this up in the preview video. Uh, so it'd be, it'd be Reardon. Yeah, it'd be Reardon. It was, that was close, though. But, yeah, I, I brought that up, and I said, whoever buys the lower left doesn't already have Canseco. Good try. But you know what? Two Maguires. That's... Dude, he did really, really... That, he got two Maguires on Maddox, two uh, Rafael Palmeros. A whole he got stack no of sleep King. cards. He got no Dave Kingmans. No Dave Kingmans. Yeah, it's, too, it, you know, it, the last couple breaks, like, it doesn't, uh, we don't spread the wealth. Like, someone gets all the hot cards in their stack. Like, one stack is hot, and the others are kind of cold. Wow, look at that. Beauty. Good for you, man. Congratulations. And that, that McGuire is really, really close. I mean, that's got to be a nine. I, I, I just feel like if it was just, like, a half a millimeter lower, it'd be a ten. Well, you know, he could just do what the... What... Yeah, you know, I'm. Listen, I'm not looking. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, we. That's something we'll talk about in a future break. There's a there's a giant card trimming scandal on a blowout, and it just uh, inc they incriminated a Super Bowl champion in it. Um, Ooh. Uh, Evan Mathis, um, who was a Pro Bowl guard for the Eagles, has a card. Uh, um, and this is all alleged, by the way. Alleged hearsay. You know. I'm just repeating something I heard. Nobody, you know, innocent until proven. But he, um, yeah, he's he's allegedly been trimming cards and moving them. And blowout is there's some guys on blowout that are just like detectives, and they pull up the old card, like the PSA seven. They show you, they circle all the little imperfections on it, yeah. and then they show uh, you like the PSA nine point five, and it's the same card. It's just been trimmed. Um, uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll get into that in a future break. That's that's a fun uh, road to go down. Um, uh, check it out on uh, on Blowout if anyone gets bored. Uh, uh, I will. Card trimming. Um, I'm going to go look it up right now. Uh, shout out to Steve Garvey and his six kids. Shout out to Dave Kingman. Uh, shout out to uh, to you, man. Thanks for having me for another great break. And uh, What are we going to break next time? That's a good question. Um, I feel like we should go to... Um, 83 or 85 maybe um maybe go back the other way we, we went 93 then we went 87 we've done 80 we've done you know what the only thing we haven't done 85 is 85 tops the only problem 85 tops is a little pricey so i hate i don't really like charging a lot for the breaks but um listen we get that extra value here because we are we are providing quality banter here so. That's right. So um, I don't know. We'll talk about it. Uh, leave a comment if you guys have a specific break you want us to do. But uh, Stu Stone from Jack of All Trades joining us again. Thank you so much, Stu. Um, Danny you. R, Jeremy T, Dan S, and Eric J is the hero. Thank you guys for buying in, and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Stu. Take care, man. See ya. Bye.